Last set of functions that we will be covering in this course are dates. So date functions are really helpful. And what you should know about Excel is that it uh, stores dates as serial numbers. So for example, this cell over here, and again, I'm on the dates tab, this cell, which says 43785, if I go over to the home tab and under formatting for this cell, I choose short date. It's going to uh, show me that serial number as a date, November 16th, 2019. This tab here is going to show you a bunch of different uh, formulas for you to practice on. And I'm going to kind of just quickly go through each of them. So the today function is useful because when I use that and do equals today, open parentheses, close parentheses, and press enter, it's going to show me today's date. Now, with today's date, we can actually do math on that date. So what will the date be in six days? Well, we can simply take this date plus six. And of course, six days from the date that we added to is going to be uh, April 18th. What will the date be in a year? We can do that base date plus one year times 365. Now, of course, this doesn't take into account leap years if we set it up this way, but this will be right for the upcoming year. And lastly, we can subtract days using the minus sign. Excel also has an equals date, equals day, equals month, and equals year function. So this will allow us to make a date using the date function and having our year, month, and day as inputs. And to do that, we type in equals date. And here you see that Excel is letting us choose a date based on the year that we give it, 2022, the month that we give it, November, and the day that we give it, 16. Close parentheses, press enter, and it makes the date. And if I hit F2, F9, it actually shows me the serial number that it's evaluating this as. And so that's to create a date using the year, month, and day. And we can also extract from a serial number the day, the month, and the year. So to determine the day, we can do equals day, open parentheses, the serial number. We can do the month by doing equals month, the serial number. And the year equals year, the serial number. Now note that when I command D these down, and if I were to format these as dates, it still works. So these are handy ways to isolate just the day, the month, or the year from an entire date. EO month is probably the most useful for building financial models or any analysis that's spread out over multiple periods. So when you use EO month, it allows you to create monthly date headers by outputting the last day of a specified month. So when I use EO month, it's going to take as an input equals EO month. It's going to take a start date and a number of months, and it's going to return the last day of the month in, uh, in that month. So easier to see uh, when we actually look at it in Excel. If we added one month to December 15th, then we would get to January 15th of the following year. 
EO month is going to give me the last day of that month. Okay. So if I lock that, let's lock this one month by putting a dollar sign in front of that or command T and I command D that down, it's going to add a month to every single uh, month and make sure it's giving me the last day of that month. And as you can see, that helps because if I were to just add uh, this plus 30, for example, I'm not going to get March 31st. And so by using EO month, it makes sure that the date that I get is the last day of that month. And you don't always have to do one month, you can do three months or six months or 12 months later. And that's different from EDate because EDate is similar to EO month, except that EDate returns the exact date X months from that start date. So whereas I used EO month here from December 15th and it gave me January 31st, if I type EDate and my start date is December 15th, comma, one month, and again, command T, command T to just lock the row, close parentheses, enter. As you can see here, I'm getting exactly one month from that date rather than the end of the month from that date.